Sometimes, we're given forces that's from one point to another. So for example, a force along a rope. We need a way to express that force in Cartesian form. To do that, we just need to follow a set of steps and you'll always get your answer. To find the force in Cartesian form, we need to know a few things. First, a position vector. A position vector is simply a vector directed from one point to another. We represent position vectors using the letter R. We can find the magnitude of this position vector. We do that by taking each component, squaring it, and then taking the square root. Now if we divide each component of our position vector by the magnitude, the result is something called a unit vector. So let's move on to some examples to see how we can actually do this. Let's take a look at this problem where we need to find the resultant force and the coordinate direction angles. So we see that this is a force directed along a line. Since both forces start at A and one goes to point B and another goes to point C. To find the answers, we need to express each force in Cartesian form. So to do that, the first step is to write down the locations of all the points of interest. We will start with point A. Point A is at the origin, so x and y components are 0, but it's 6 meters up, which means the z component will be 6. Next, point B. It's 2 meters in the x direction, 3 meters in the negative y direction, and since it's at the ground level, the z component is 0. Lastly, we have point C. That's 3 meters in the x direction, 2 meters in the y direction, and 0 meters in the z direction. The second step is to write the position vectors. So it's just a vector that starts from where the force starts and then ends where the force ends. We will first look at force FB. Notice how force FB starts at A and ends at point B. So to find the position vector, we just subtract the position of A from the position of B. So we're just subtracting each component of A from B. Just a tip, when we look at the way we wrote RAB, B is the last letter. So when we subtract, we actually write B first and A comes second, so we're subtracting A from B. If you keep that in mind, you won't mix them up. Let's simplify. Let's do the same for force FC. So it starts at A and ends at C, which means we subtract the position of A from C. Now we will find the magnitude of each of these position vectors. We do that by taking each term, squaring it, adding it all together, and then taking the square root of it. Next, RAC. By the way, these magnitudes we found is the distance from points A to B and A to C. In other words, the length of each rope. Now that we have the magnitude, we need to find the unit vector. We do that by taking each term in our position vector and dividing it by the magnitude. So the last step in expressing our force in Cartesian form is to multiply it by the unit vector. So for force FB, we're just multiplying each term in the unit vector by 560 newtons. Let's simplify. Next, we have force FC. So again, all we do is multiply the magnitude of the force by the unit vector. So now that we have our forces expressed in Cartesian form, we can add them together to get the resultant force. We just add i components to i components, j components to j components, and k components to k components. The magnitude of this force can be found the same way we did before. To find the coordinate direction angles, we can use these equations. If we take the inverse of cosine, we get our angles. Those are our answers. If these equations are unfamiliar to you, please check the description for the previous video about the addition of Cartesian vectors where I discussed them in detail. Let's take a look at this question where we need to express each force in the ropes in Cartesian form. So the first step is to write down the locations of points A, B, C, D, and E. First, point A. Next, point B. Now point C. Point D is next. And lastly, we have point E. Now we have three cables, so we need three position vectors. The first will be for force FB, which goes from A to B. Next, we got force FC, which goes from A to C. Lastly, we have force FE, which goes from D to E. The next step is to calculate the magnitude of each of the position vectors. Now that we have the magnitude, we can find the unit vectors. So remember, all we do is divide each term in the position vector by the magnitude. 
The last step is to multiply the force by the unit vector. First, force FB. Let's simplify. Next, force FC. And lastly, we have force FE. Those are our answers. Let's take a look at one last example where we have a force already given to us in Cartesian form and we need to find the location of point B. So first, let's write down the locations of points A and B. So when we don't know the value, we will just use the X, Y, and Z letters to represent the locations. Now we will write a position vector from A to B. Let's simplify. Notice that we're given the length of the rope in the question, or in other words, the magnitude. So the unit vector will be each term in the position vector divided by the magnitude. Now let's look at the force given to us in Cartesian form. We can find the magnitude of this force using our usual method. So now, we know that a force in Cartesian form is simply the magnitude of force times the unit vector. And we are already given the Cartesian form of the force. So let's write it down. To solve, all we need to do is equate the components. So I components to I components, J components to J components, and K components to K components. Let's solve, and those are our answers. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to forces directed along a line. I hope this helped, and if it did, please consider sharing it with your friends and classmates. They too might find it helpful. Thanks for watching, and